Hello everyone, welcome to Crafting on a Budget, and look what I just sewed. Yes, I did, I sewed some pillows, and this one here has Do Not Open Until December 25th, Special Delivery, No Peeking. And I also made Dear Santa, Define Good, and it has little tassels on the side. So guess what I use to make these very affordable three bucks guys with the exception of the polyfill I use this little bag gift sack from Michaels and I paid three bucks kid you not three bucks perfect little project so what are you gonna do this is what you're gonna do you're gonna take your sack Pull it in. Perfect. And it's like a canvas type. So this is even more perfect because you know it's going to be kind of sturdy. And it's a lot cheaper than getting the placemat size for sure. And it's a lot easier because you already have three sides already sewn. And all you have to do is sew the one side. So what I do is I start sewing right along that stitch down here and then I leave about four to four to four and a half inches um, that is unsewn and I leave my tassel just like that and then I flip it inside. I take some polyfill. Now I go to Walmart and I pick up this big old polyfill bag and it is about 50 ounces and I can't remember how much we pay if it's $13 or what it is but it's fairly inexpensive and I was able to make two pillows so far and I'll be making it the third so this is what I would do because I'm attached to the waist <laughs> with my headphones and I'm going to go take this to the sewing machine but I want to show you the other one now this is another one now this one was gifted to me by Michelle Pipeling this is one that was at Dollar General I believe isn't it darling isn't it beautiful so this is what I'm going to do because I'm not going to need this big old pillow or this big old sack like that what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a pillow out of it it's perfect pillow so I'm going to cut it right along probably along this line and so and stuff it now won't be able to stuff it all today because I gotta go to Walmart and stuff it but you'll see the end results towards the end of the video so you'll have to see the entire video to see what it looks like once we're done so let's take this party to the sewing machine I'm gonna put my headsets down so you are gonna hear my sewing machine go off um, but that's okay so we'll be back in a few seconds
So as you can see, we sew down here. We've left this much of an opening. Now I'm going to go ahead, stick my hand in, and we're going to pull these through. Grab these two ends. Very easy. If I can do this, guys, I think you guys can do it as well. Very affordable and very cute and very stylish. Definitely goes with the farmhouse look. So, there it is. Right? left with this here and that's fine because that has a purpose. Now I know that I'm going to be using plenty of my um, polyfill. I'm sorry for the noise from the I try to do the corners, stuff that in really good. Christmas decor, very affordable Christmas decor, which is the most important part. You don't have to go out and spend, I saw a lot of beautiful pillows, of course, at um, Hobby Lobby, but definitely not at my price range, and um, I saw these at Target, and I said, you know what, that is my pillow, that is my Christmas little pillows for our living room, so... I think I like to stuff those little corners really good, get it nice and firm. I make it really nice and firm because that's just how I want it firm. And you could probably use like an old pillow and stuff it in. If you want to recycle an old pillow, you can do that as well so you don't have to buy your polyfill. However, whatever works best for you. But for three bucks, I have myself a nice little pillow um, that is very trendy and very decorative. Super stoked about these and how they came out. have these really big forceps and sometimes when I'm in really tight spots I use those forceps to tuck in and I had them for when I did dolls so but these are at Target and the little those little bins when you walk into Target see I know I'm going to need more polyfill but you guys get the hint of what I mean and there's a little stitch that I do to seal it up um, and I did that with when I did my dolls so I try to go into the corners and make sure those are really nice and firm so I get everything moving in however I want it so what I do is once I have it completely filled and I know I gotta go in and get more I take it fold it right there pull pull down that tab and I do a hidden stitch um, so that you don't see so I just kind of do a little hidden stitch and I'll show you that when I get more fill I will show you that hidden stitch so that is that see how beautiful that is North Pole Express special delivery post office Isn't that beautiful love it. So, 
I'm going to go back, I'm going to cut the other one, I'm going to sew that one, and hopefully we'll get more polyfill and we can get these rocking and rolling. So you have to stay put until the end of the video to see what they look like. Okay, so I've taken this little bag that was gifted to me from um, by Michelle Pipeline, not from Michelle Pipeline, um, and I've cut it at exactly 14, about... It is 19 inches. So I'm going to use that little fold line. as my little guideline for the inside as well and that, that kind of helps out when I go in so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and pull it out because I'm not a seamstress I, I, I'm not good at sewing trust me if I can sew you guys can do this for sure So this has like little plastic thingies that kept it together. Alright, so what we're going to do is once we flip it inside out, we're going to take these, turn them in like that. And we're going to sew. And I'm going to get my little pins that I found finally. I think the mouse heard me talking about them. Okay. So as you can see the stitching on the side of this is coming undone. It wasn't very good. So I'm going to go right in And you can iron these down if you want. It makes it easier for you. I'm not even going to do that, guys. I, I'm not going to lie. I don't like doing any of that stuff. I don't. Because, again, I'm not a seamstress not my cup of tea. I'm just a crafter that wants some pillows for her home. Okay, so we're going to go all the way across. And I'm doing it this way so that the little pin heads do not get in the way of my sewing machine because that can jack up your needle. So we're just going to, we're going to take this down to the sewing machine and we're going to stitch and I am going to secure and lock the edges here because I know that they kind of came uh, frayed when I cut down. Now this little piece here, what I'm going to do is I am going to sew this and make another little bag. Um, I'm just going to flip it inside out and I'm going to sew it and I'll make a bag and I can take it and I can stencil on it which I probably will take some stencil and stencil right on it um, or maybe not just leave it like that I don't know um, again these side stitches they're not very good so we're gonna have to sew those down a little um, but it should work. We're going to sew, sew, sew on three. And I'm going to do the same thing on this just to lock it and secure. So, so, so. Just to lock it. And I'm going to leave about at least a four to five inch opening um, on one end so I can stuff it there. So that's that one. Okay. So again, you have to stay put to the end to see what all this looks like. 
Okay, so here's the upper portion of that little sack. And what I ended up doing is, and I probably will do this, is I'm going to stencil using some of the Chocotor ink, fabric inks. But inside, I ended up doing like a little tab there, sewing it across down there as well. So that, that way it kind of laid flat, like so, like that. And then I can just take the um, stencils and stencil on. And I could have cut it in half, but then I thought about the, the little tassels. I don't know, I still could do that, but I kind of liked it just like that, you know, just a little fold up bag like that and here's the pillow I followed the stitch the original uh, stitch on there and went around the entire perimeter now I gotta say it's not the best stitching because this was fairly cheaply made of course it's from what to expect Dollar General but still it's beautiful little sack and you know I love red trucks. I just love those red trucks. All right, pull it out. So if you have these, just make sure you secure your stitches because they're not very good. They're not stitched right. So there's my, go in here and fluff out these little corners. there's there there it is and all I'm gonna do now is once I um, start to um, fill it up I'll just take that in and I'll make a hidden stitch right in there and you will not even see that stitch so very very easy and very very simple I just got maybe iron it just a tad bit just like so and you can probably run it through your sewing machine I just do a hand hand stitch and you can't even see it once I'm done but I will fill it up and it's gonna be a beautiful beautiful little pillow for a home decor so thank you Michelle Pipeline for this uh, sack I appreciate tremendously I want to show you one more thing now Hobby Lobby has these napkins very farm house style napkins and you get a set of four that comes with this little sleeve for um, kit Christmas tableware 2019 it was originally $11.99 it's a Robert Stanley home collection and it's the cotton striped napkins set of four okay and I paid six bucks because it's half off of that and this little sleeve here what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it and I am going to dress up a beautiful candle with it so don't toss that you can also if you want you can make a cute little cuff out of it may you know cut it up and make it a little bit closer you can make a cute little cuff if you wanted to but I'm gonna dress up Isn't that cute if you made a cuff out of it wouldn't that be darling anyway I am going to be taking going back and getting more because these come a set of four now here's what I want to do I am going to take some of the chocotour stuff I am going to make a pillow two pillows out of a pack of four and I think this cotton stripe totally farm style and I'm going to make sure that I make I stencil something on it that is going to be for all year round um, and I love 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 the look of it so if you have a, a Hobby Lobby check it out pack of four of napkins you can make two pillows for six bucks and 
you can also have a candle sleeve or you can make a cuff so you have three things that you can do out of this so grab it while you can and um, you're going to see again like I said you're going to see the end results once I get the polyfill of what all this stuff looks like so stay tuned okay so I decided that I'm going to take the napkin and fold it in half and make two pillows out of one and basically what you're going to do is you're going to take one of them because remember I thought I was going to make two entire ones but I'm going to make a total of three because I'm going to take one or two of these and fold it in half to make half pillows um, and I saw some really cute ones at Hobby Lobby that I wanted but again they were pretty pricey so this is my way of getting what I want at an affordable way I'm using the Chocotor ink mat that is sticky you'll have to remove the backing and I'll put the link below I folded it in half the good side is facing up and I've selected this farmhouse stencil again I will link that below and I'm using a red ink that is permanent okay and this is ink not paste we have the paste and we have the ink so this is the red ink and we also have the black ink and my squeegees again ink not paste okay because we have the two and of course this is going to be for the center I have a smaller squeegee for that one you want to make sure that you also have um, your distilled water and also uh, some wipes to wipe your hands just so that you don't get your your fabric stained and I have my little fuzzy next to me okay so to heat set this I'm going to use the heat gun then I'm going to take the Cricut easy press and I'm going to put that at 330 for 30 seconds on each section there so we'll work it through because this is my first experience all right so let's let's start peel this off let's put that over here and oh, no 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 I gotta remember I have to sew portions of this and you can use painters tape um, to tape some of this down if you want it's a lot more affordable than the one that they have and it's sticky but because we're going on fabric um, you still want to be a little bit on the safe side just in case and make sure you get it really good in there get the the silk from the transfer to make good contact with the fabric let's just kind of rub it in a little okay leave that out now the little ink mat is sandwiched between the the fabric and that's just to make sure that it doesn't bleed through kind of protects it a little bit you know gives you a little bit of a protection there it's going up in the hill it's going a little crooked So see that's why you want the painters tape because since it is fabric I'm telling you it is not gonna stick okay. I got my heat press and this is my first time using the heat press guys and I got my heat gun going my heat press at 330 and let's breathe breathe a little breathe a little make sure I get really good I hope this comes out great guys I've never done this before so you're just gonna witness me doing something for the first time I guess everything is for the first time 
All right. Wow. Ready? Okay. Let's go. Let's do this. Um. Oh, I have a lot of stuff there. Maybe I should have not. I don't want to make a mess. I think I'm going to change that one out because that's really messy, but let's try. You want to start on the outside of the transfer, that's for sure. Drag it in. Drag it in, drag it in, and because it's fabric, you know, it's going to be sucking some of that yumminess right up. some of these little Christmas projects off my list. I feel like I have a honey to-do list. I don't know if you guys ever feel that way. Boy, I am so behind on these projects. And thank you guys all for the birthday wishes. I really appreciate that. That was really nice of you guys to do that. It felt special. All the birthday wishes. Alright, hopefully that worked. As you can see, it sucks it in pretty well. Trying to squeegee that, some of that stuff out. Just to see what this looks like, guys. Just anxious and nervous at the same time. This is like a form like silk screening or silk printing. I think that's what it's called. All right, let's clean some of this. Peel it back and then I'm going to heat set it and then I want to take the reef and do the reef separately. I'm going to also take this transfer into the bathroom because I don't want that to um, I don't want that to dry up and ruin my transfer. I'm literally going to throw that away because I don't want that to stain my stuff. And painter's tape is so affordable so it's better to toss it because you get a little bit of ink in there you don't want that to get ruined to ruin your fabric. Okay. 
I feel like I'm limited on moving around because of these headsets. Ooh, pretty. Ooh, that looks gorgeous. Okay, there's one. And then there's two. I'm going to run this to the bathroom real quick and I'll be back. Looks great. It looks really good. All right, so I'm going to heat set just a little bit some of this. Oops. And you really don't want to do it with your mat underneath. I just want to do it real quick. Just a little bit and then I I'm going to grab now this one. Let's heat, let me heat it up a little bit more. I just don't want to move the ink mat because then I will have a hard time positioning it back. So especially here in these two letters that I have to sandwich this in. I want to get those two letters at least. But you really don't want that mat to get... You don't want to damage that mat. So let's put that there. And then I'm going to 
take the red, candy apple red, and start from the outside of the transfer, working my way in. And that's what I've read. How pretty is that guys okay run this to the sink and I'm gonna be back to the heat set Ain't that pretty? All right, let's move these little pins. I had it secured in place. So the mat is sticky. Um, and basically that's so that um, your fabric is not moving and shifting all over the place. But I need to remove that mat. Just trying to make sure I'm never, I don't want to make ruin. spinning there hopefully you guys are seeing this because it
Okay, so I wasn't sure if you guys saw. I removed that ink mat. Um, and I'm just going to heat set it with my heat gun. And then I'm going to take, I have my easy press over there warming up. I'm going to do it front and back because that's what they recommend. And as soon as Mr. Larson wakes up, I will have him run and get me some um, polyfill. towel because I don't have that um, that one piece from uh, what do you call it cricket the little mat so I just have this little towel and that should work and I also don't have parchment paper they recommend you use parchment paper but I don't have any um, thought I did but I don't so I'm just going to use some printer paper. Hopefully this will work. And I'm going to do 30 seconds here, 30 seconds there, and I'm going to move it around so that we can get good contact. Um, all right, so let's bring this over. That's a big thing. And I'm going to do it for 30 seconds. this way just in case well I'm not sure how the timer is not part well I guess I'll do it on my head because I'm not sure how this timer Do again. I keep moving around just because it's a big piece and I'm counting the seconds in my head here I guess I could be looking at the seconds on the computer
It looks like it's done its deed. I'm being cautious. I know I'm probably overdoing it here a little bit, but I'm just being super cautious. Making sure I get every little speck. Let me see if I put a little bit of pressure. should about do it. I think I I think I got it. <laughs> All right. So you can see my mat from underneath is kind of didn't like the heat. Sorry, right. I was about to toss that mat anyway. All right. So here we have it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to stitch around. I'm going to leave about about four to five inches of a spacing that's open so that I can stuff and then this will be a cute little farmhouse pillow and in all reality you know I paid let's see it was six bucks for the pack because it was 50% off and I can make two small ones a big one and then I'll have a candle ring holder so I think I did a pretty good deal there um, I'm going to take this to the sewing machine and then you guys will see the end results of what it looks like. So I have finally stuffed all my pillows. I'll show you here in a bit what they all look like. I just wanted to show you that hidden stitch that I was talking about. And I've got my needle and thread ready to go. And basically what you're going to do, I'm hoping that I can get a good shot of this. There he is. There we go. I think you guys can see that better. Once you have it all nice and stuffed. And again, these are the socks from um, Target. So you're just going to stitch along that edge so that you have this almost like a little tassel hanging out. Pull that in. Take your needle right in to your sewing stitch right up there hide your little knot right and then you see the little two flaps that are folded you're going to go into that crease on each side so we're going to go on this side it's on the crease and then we're going to go on the opposite side And then you're going to keep doing that all the way straight across. It's on the folded crease, as you can see. And this is a nice little stitch that I learned when I was doing dolls. Just a figure, so whenever I try to record, I get a little notification. Okay. So basically, it's just going back and forth, back and forth. Um, on each side. That way you're not seeing that little stitch. It's not as noticeable. And 
I'm going to try to keep them the same. I haven't reminded you guys please don't forget to hit the subscribe button click on the bell to notify you whenever I go live or whenever I upload a video um, I know that YouTube has been doing some serious modifications and with the modifications you have to make sure that your notifications are on I know this new coming year they're talking about more changes that they're planning on doing some off camera um, but hopefully it's not too drastic of a change it's kind of on the iffy moment especially with all the little changes with the um, Copa. So. All right. At the end, I just try to put those two together. And then you'll just end up doing a lock stitch. And that's just that's all it's to it not very hard not very difficult just a little stitch just to hide it and not make it so noticeable so there it is there you have it there's a the little sack pillow minus my hair it's kind of inedible did I say that right probably not no, there's something falling. I, I, I tell you, these um, head, headsets are like oh, always in my way. Okay, so here's the one that I made with the little chicken. And here's the farmhouse one. And this is my favorite. Isn't that awesome? Move all this out of the way. You can see this better. I love it. Not pretty. And that's just from a sack from this is from Dollar General, gifted to me by Michelle Pipling. So thank you, Michelle. There it is, the finished pillow. And of course, these are the ones from um, Target Sacks, and they're three dollars and perfect little pillows. Anyway, I hope this inspired you to create some of your own. If you have any questions, you know where to find me. Until next time, guys. Bye-bye.